Hey, what's up? It's Sean or Mustang09, and today we're back with another install. We're working on the truck. This is uh, what I call the Beast, AKA my 2017 F250. And today we are installing the PMF suspension dual steer, I can't say this, dual steering stabilizer kit. That's what we're installing, okay? Uh, it's gonna go on the truck. We have the Fox stabilizers to go on that. So it's gonna look sick underneath there. I do have the two wheel drive valence, so you should get to see plenty of this steering stabilizer kit underneath the truck. It's not gonna be hidden by that huge four wheel drive front valence, that lip there. Uh, so yeah, let's go inside and take a look at all the parts. Alrighty guys, for this install, you're gonna need a rubber mallet. This will be your best friend throughout the install. A ratchet, a torque wrench, then a breaker bar. This will help get the nuts loose off of the diff cover. We have a 14 millimeter, 15 millimeter, and then I used two 19 millimeter sockets uh, you don't have to have two, you can use a 19 millimeter wrench, but I don't have one, so I used two 19 millimeter sockets. I used an extension. You'll need that to get around some of the suspension components underneath the truck, especially if you're using an impact. And then a 9 16th wrench, that will help you. Uh, if you're not too manly, uh, an instruction manual, this will be great. They email it to you when you purchase it. There's also one online. I went ahead and printed mine off for ease of use. Uh, once again, I used an impact where I could. Uh, this one isn't the strongest, so it didn't do the best job in the world, but it does help. And then a tape measure, which you will need this to measure the uh, little shock arms underneath. You have to get those dialed into a certain specification in the instruction manual, so a tape measure will come in handy. That's all you need. Super simple install. Uh, nothing crazy as far as tools are concerned. Uh, you will have to do some manipulating with the rubber mallet, but other than that, this should get you going for the install. Alrighty guys, so in front of you is everything that comes with this PMF, the uh, dual steering stabilizer kit. Uh, I, I opted for the Fox stabilizers. These can be, you have three choices, the Bilsteins, the Fox, or the Kings. And I went with the Foxes for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, because in the near future, I'm planning on doing Foxes on all four corners of the truck. Two, I think they look great. They're gonna match the truck great with the black logos and stuff on there. And three, I really wanted the Kings but they're a little pricey right now for me because I have this thing right over here. This is my Mustang. It's gonna get some boost this year. So I've got to, uh, I gotta watch my pennies where I can. And Fox makes a great product. So they're, it's not gonna be like they're insufficient for what my needs are. These are gonna be great. And they're gonna look awesome under the truck. One thing PMF recommends is that you do a parts list just to make sure everything came in the mail as it should. As you can see on my computer over there, I have the instructions pulled up. So I'll go ahead and put that on the screen here for you guys so it's easy for you to see. Everything came in the kit as it should. Everything looks great. This stuff is thick. This stuff is heavy duty. We're not gonna have any issues with this. I don't feel, so I'm excited to get it on the truck. And it makes the truck look cool. It makes the truck look beefier and stronger. So let's do this. Also, don't let me forget koozies on the website. They're on mustang09.com. You can pick up some koozies. Got a couple options, got some shirts. Yeah, go hook it up, get some merch. I appreciate you. Alrighty guys, first order of business is to remove these two bolts here on the left side of the diff cover. It's a 15 millimeter socket. Probably gonna have to do it by hand because they're on there tight. Alrighty guys, since my little Ryobi impact's a little too weak to get these broke loose, we're gonna have to resort to hand power the braking bar. So we'll get these broke loose and then take them the rest of the way out with the impact. Easy enough. There we go. Oh, I didn't see this guy on there, so this guy came off too. Now we have to go ahead and install the uh, center mount diff cover, this piece, this big piece here, with their supplied 3 8 inch by inch and a quarter bolts, which are these little guys, and I'm gonna put the washers on there. But before I do that, I noticed the factory bolts had thread locker on it, so I'm gonna install thread locker on these. I think this is just a uh, name tag that shows the gear ratio on the truck, so I'll go ahead and just leave that off. I don't think it's doing anything as far as structural or support. It's just there to tell you what gears are in the front uh, differential. So. 
bolt this up, put some blue thread locker on, be good to go. The one thing I did notice in the directions is that it doesn't say anything about the washers, which I know it's probably common sense of where washers go and where they don't go. It would be nice to know in the directions from the manufacturer that they re recommend them or they don't recommend them in certain spots. So I'm just assuming they're going to go everywhere. Like I have them laid out on the table and we'll go with that. So should be good. Go that way. that so once again we have our three eighths in, three eight uh inch and a quarter bolts here with some blue thread locker on gonna feed those on that's a sturdy bracket let me tell you it's stout it's heavy And those torque to 20 foot pounds of torque. But now that everything moving forward is going to use nylon locking nuts, we can get rid of the blue Loctite. We won't need that. But now we are going to install the backside of the center mount clamp. It's going to use uh, these uh, four two inch bolts. They're three eighths, three eighths by two inch is what they are. There's four of them, and they have washers on them as well. So we'll put a washer on either side. There's two per bolt, and then we'll put the nylon locking nut on. I'm going to install all of these very loosely and then I'll come back around and tighten them how they should be. But if you tighten one of these too tight, trying to put the other three on is just going to be a battle. So, Alrighty guys, we're running into our first issue of the install. On the instructions, it says that you should have four 3 8 two inch, 3 8 by 2 inch bolts. If you can see here, the total distance of this is an inch and 3 quarters. So this isn't long enough to go through that bracket and bolt up the other side. So now I'm gonna to have to go to the store, find some grade eight bolts that match this, but are two inches so that I can do this install. So off to the hardware store. Alrighty, back from the parts store. And you can tell just by looking at them, this is what was really holding me up there. Get these off. That's the size difference you're looking at. So this is the supplied nut, nylon locking nut. It fits on to the new one, no issue. But if we look at the, the measurement here, you can tell it's two inches where it needs to be. So I said this was inch and three quarters. It's really an inch and a half is what this one is technically considered. So those will be no longer and we will use this new hardware here. It's all grade eight stuff. It's no big deal. It only costs $1.38 for these four, but uh, it's just the annoyance of having stuff taken apart and having to go to the store, you know, and clean up your mess and all that jazz. So back to the install. So as you guys could imagine with the shorter bolts, I wasn't able to, on this top one here, get it to, I couldn't even feed the washer on the other side with this bolt as loose as it could go. So the longer ones, the correct ones, We'll make this part so much easier. So let's get these ones out of here and get the right ones on there. And just so you guys know, you are now under the truck and you are facing the front of the truck. So now you're looking um, underneath, you're sitting underneath the passenger seat basically and looking forward just so you have a perspective on where we're at currently in the project. So this setup is gonna go bolt from the front of the truck in. It's gonna have a washer on it. That'll slide through. much better now one more washer and then the nylon locking nut and you're gonna repeat that four times and that'll put this bracket onto it's the back bracket onto the front Now that all those are on, we're gonna tighten them down. To tighten these down, it's a 14 millimeter or 9 16 You're gonna need one of each or two of each to uh, hold one side and ratchet it down from the other side. We're gonna ratchet these down till they're snug. On the instructions, it says there's gonna be a gap, so don't worry about them not mating perfectly. It's okay if there's a gap on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna do these crisscross style just to get even pressure on there, but uh, let's do this.
And that appears to be a 14. However, the bolt side of it, it doesn't really work. So I think it's a 15 on the bolt side of it. Just uh, FYI. They're all on. Let me check the gap. This gap looks pretty similar. Maybe this one a little bit more. Alrighty, so we've got this gap pretty even from these two bolts and then on the top, which it's gonna be hard to show you because my camera's so big, but the gap up there seems to be pretty even too. So now we get to move on in the process and go to the next step. The beauty of this kit is how universal it is. On the instructions, it says if you're between the stock ride height, and I think it says three to three and a half inches, you mount your stabilizers on the bottom. If you're taller than that, you mount the stabilizers on the top. Uh, they do say to make sure compression of suspension and stuff, but since we have factory springs and shocks currently, we're gonna mount ours on the bottom since we only have a two and a half inch leveling kit on the front, and I think we should be fine mounting them on the bottom side. So we take our beautiful Fox dampers and these will just mount up here using the four inch hardware these big daddies here and the dog bone piece which is this this will clamp it like so so it'll go like that with the four inch bolt on there this is why i like doing installs for you because sometimes the instructions aren't as clear as you would like them to be right so we have these three inch bolts here that come with the kit and on the uh, parts list, these are labeled on there. As you read through the, the instructions, it doesn't mention three inch bolts anywhere. It talks about using two four inch bolts in two different spots. Well, we only have two four inch bolts. We don't have four. So I am under the impression that the three inch bolts actually go here and we're gonna use the four inch bolts for the other end of the dampener to go on the other side. So we're gonna remove this four inch bolt and use these three inch bolts here. Cause as you can tell, there's plenty of play here and there's a, no threads on this part of this bolt. So I'm afraid that that's gonna come into play when tightening, that, tightening it down. So before I use this nylon locking nut, we'll go ahead and try the three inch and see if that makes more sense. And I would call PMF. However, it is a Sunday, so they're not open. So that goes on there, then this comes under here. This looks a whole lot better, I can tell you. There's a lot less uh, of the threads showing. Uh, it looks cleaner. So I'm assuming we are right with making the call that this here is the three inch bolt instead of the four as stated in the install directions. So we'll go ahead and do the other side. This is wanting to swing around on me. You'll wanna make sure that the Fox is legible from the front so it looks the best. Alrighty, so those are on. I'm just going to keep them loose for now until we get the other pieces on that we need and then we'll tighten everything down. I would hate to tighten it down and have to back it off uh, if we're going to need to have some wiggle room and something to play with here. So we will uh, move on to the next step. I'm doing my best to try to film this install for you. So if some of the angles are funky, I do apologize. Right now you are on the driver's side of the vehicle sort of facing forward. This is the passenger front tire here. What we need to do now is we need to measure Oh, there's something on there. Okay, we need to measure from eye to eye on this shock that it is 19.125 inches, and that is where you will want to mount the outer mount on your drag bar up here, or the track bar, sorry, your track bar up here. So 19.125 from eye to eye. It's gonna put it just on the other side of the adjustment here on your track bar. So we're gonna use the U-bolts that are supplied with the kit. They're in this bag here. And these outer mounts, which these are, these are universal, so you'll have two. They look the same. You can flip-flop them for either side. There's no left or right. So we'll mount these on the underside here with the U-bolts, and we will compress this to go into here. I'm running into another issue with the kit. These U-bolts here don't want to slide over where they're supposed to be. So when they, when I do force them over, instead of being the shape they're in now, they kind of spread a little bit more, which should be okay because if you see 
This is slotted a little larger, so I guess they were assuming that was gonna happen. However, mine's still not fitting within this slot here, and I don't wanna drill it out too much further because there's not enough meat left if you go too much further over. So I've gotta figure out a way to get this to bend back a little bit more uh, closed so that I can get it on this bracket. As you can tell here, it fits in just fine like that. And there's a little bit of room for play. But I did have to clearance out the inside of these as there were burrs inside. And I couldn't even get this to just slide down in there. I had to get a, a metal bit and clean it out a little bit. So we'll see how we can get this U-bolt uh, to close up a little bit more so that I can get it to fit within this bracket. Alrighty guys, you can see I finally gotten this one on. It's taken some uh, some massaging, trying to get it in the right spot. I slid it further down towards the tire so that it, it seemed to get a little thinner down there. I mean, once you get it on, you've got plenty of room. It's just getting it over the initial fact that it's spread apart. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, hand tighten a nut on there to hold it into place so that I can work the second one on. Um, whew, that was a chore. It had me sweating for a minute there. Didn't know if I was gonna get it to work. Hallelujah. We did it. It is a tight fit, I tell you. That is snug. All right, so this one is on. We're able to manipulate it. We're keeping it loose because we've got to bring this arm over. And remember, we've got to measure this eyelet to the other eyelet at 19.125 inches. So I'm gonna work on that now, sliding this in, pushing this in, compressing this. And then we will take our four inch bolt and slide it through to hold it into place. I feel like it needs to come in just a hair. Yep, we got it. 19.125, I'm gonna tighten this one down and then we'll move on to the other side over there. This was tough. On these ones, you wanna tighten it to 16 foot pounds of torque and it says do not go over. Be very careful there. I think they're afraid you'll snap the U-bolts because I don't know that those are grade eight because they're the silver and not the gold. So listen to the directions there, 16 foot pounds of torque. Be very careful, don't go too crazy with it. We are now tightening everything down. Once again, the U-bolt, 16 foot pounds. And I believe these ones are 65. I need to check that one more time, but I'm pretty positive they're 65. Anyways, on the U-bolts, I'm gonna do the same crisscross pattern when I'm tightening them, just so I get an even tight on uh, all four. So we'll do that now, just do it by hand, and then I'll go grab my, my torque wrench. And for those bolts, those, those nuts, I'm using a 15 millimeter socket. We're nearing the end of the install. We are gonna torque these ones down to 65 foot pounds. They are a 19 millimeter socket, so you'll need either two of those or a 19 millimeter wrench to go on top. We'll just use two sockets here. I think I put the washer on wrong on this one. All right, so what I did wrong on this one was this one needs to go, well, first it needs to come out. So, all right guys, so what I think I did wrong there is I think this needs to have a washer inside of here like that so that it's bolt washer uh, this little eyelet washer and then it goes on so we'll make that correction on both sides the rubber mallet is definitely your friend on this install now this will tighten back down to 65 foot-pounds I say 19 foot pounds, I meant 65 foot pounds. I hope I said 65. It's a 19 millimeter socket. 
And what you want to do is when you torque it, from what I've read online, torque it on the nut side, not the bolt head side, because it's not an accurate reading from the bolt head side. I think that that's what I heard. So that one's torqued. Now we're going to go through and do the rest. I don't remember what this one torques to, so let me go get the specs on this one real quick. Alrighty, so easy enough. The dog bone one, which is this center piece here, also torques to 65 foot pounds. And I'm gonna alternate it so we get even tightening. Don't wanna torque one side down while the other side's completely loose. We'll tighten them equally. Sixty-five. Next, we move to the other end and repeat that process. So, I'm just gonna do that real quick, and then there's one more thing before we're done. Whew, I tell you, I don't know if I was just off my game today for the install, or if just once the ball started rolling, everything started falling into place. It felt like the U bolts wanted to fight me, and then those other bolts that I thought were too small, and I went and got bigger ones. You know, if I would have maybe tighten those down. I don't know how I would have made it work, but there's so much thread on the other one showing that I now feel like those other bolts probably would have worked had I tried to uh, uh, clamp them on there a little tighter uh, from the get-go. So either, either way, neither here nor there, the kit is on. It looks great. I'm hoping it's going to function properly. Uh, it looks like it will. I don't have any reason to doubt that, but we have one more part of the install. As you can see, the kit is on. It looks fantastic under there. But I need to now test out the steering and make sure nothing's binding and it can turn freely still. So that's what I'm going to do. Well guys, I am whooped after that install. It's just getting hot outside. I had a long Saturday night, which was last night, today's Sunday, so that could play into some of what happened here during the install, if you know what I mean. But the parts are on, there's no binding, everything seems to be good. I am gonna jump in the truck now, take it for a test drive, crank that AC, and just see if I feel anything funky. I will report that back to you guys and then we'll end the video there. All righty guys, so testing it out, I don't feel any binding, nothing feels weird. I still feel like I have my full ability to turn, like my radius doesn't seem any shorter or anything of that nature. Pulling pretty tight circles here in this, in this parking lot. Nothing feels out of ordinary. I'm going to go the other direction and see how that feels. Yeah, so driving in circles, I still feel like I have my, my turning radius. Nothing bad there, so all that's good. So doing those test circles, nothing feels out of ordinary, nothing feels like it's binding. The steering doesn't feel extremely stiff or anything like that. It does feel a little tighter when you're turning. Uh, I think that it naturally would feel that way because of the parts we've put on. One thing I do notice though, is if you'll watch when I turn here and we go, the self correcting, it doesn't self correct as well as it used to. See, I'm on the other side of the road here, but uh, you know, you just have to drive it a little more now. You have to do a little more hands-on when you're turning, which with the bigger tires like I have, you have to do that as well. Uh, those also uh, have some prevention and the self-correcting when you, when you make a turn in the steering wheel wants to come back with your momentum. So I'll show you here what I'm talking about. We are going to just make a left turn here. Make sure the coast is clear. We're good to go. So we'll make a left turn. Steering wheel is pretty turned and then letting go. You see how long it takes to get back to straight. Uh, before it didn't take that long. It would definitely autocorrect a lot faster than that, but no big deal. I mean, it's nothing that's crazy. Uh, you're gonna have your hands on the steering wheel anyways, and you can't expect this truck to drive itself. You're gonna have to do some driving as well. So we'll do a turn here. And this road's pretty bumpy, and I don't feel the shutter of the front wheels as much as I used to. So we'll turn, let it autocorrect. And it didn't do too bad there. So just from a stop, it seems that the autocorrecting is the, it's where it lacks the most. When you've got some momentum in your turning, it doesn't seem to be that big of an issue. Get the truck up to speed here. See how it feels, going about 55, 50 miles, 50 miles an hour now. 
definitely feels sturdy up front. It doesn't feel as jumpy as it did before. That's awesome. This is exactly what I was looking to get rid of, and that worked. Before, I had this real twitchy steering wheel. Any little bump, and it just seemed like it would twitch. It would twitch, and now it's not doing that. And this is not a very smooth road, just let me tell you. Fortunately, my town doesn't have the best roads, and so it's always good to test stuff like this on them. And I just don't feel the jumpiness that I felt before I had this installed. So, man, that's awesome. I love it. Alrighty guys, that wraps up this install. A couple of notes to make is that after 100 miles of driving this, I'm gonna go back and retorque those bolts and nuts and make sure that they're all tight. I'm gonna do the same again at 500 miles, and then I'll probably tend to check them uh, pretty regularly, maybe every oil change or so, just to make sure everything's holding on strong. I do wanna say I may have been a little early and jumped the gun on those shorter bolts. You probably could have gotten those to work and didn't have to go get the actual two inch ones, but I did notice in the kit that those were inch and a half and not the two inches as per the instructions. And then also in the instruction sheet, it calls for four inch, four four inch bolts, but on the inventory, it only has two four inch bolts. So at uh, some point in there, we did use the three inch bolts. So keep an eye out for that. But you know, other than that, it looks great. I think it looks fantastic underneath the truck. Really gives it a meaner stance up front. So no complaints there. I think the color of the Fox shocks really go with the truck. I can't wait to get the Foxes on all four corners. And uh, yeah, so really excited about that. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions about it, leave a comment down below. I'll list all the parts and everything that I used in this video down below. And also the other mods that I have to my truck are always in the description for you guys to check out. I appreciate your viewership. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you boys back here next time. Take it easy, peace. Thank you.